I'm Tim C. Smith for Matt, who's down in Florida for a quick getaway. We will check in with him later in the broadcast. In this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a preview of the March issue. We have a rundown of the upcoming events. Paul McCain shows us how to tie another fly and maybe a few reports from around the island. Stay tuned. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Thanks to everyone who stopped by at last week's MSA Surf Fishing Show to say hello, and it was great to hear your feedback, and finally things are starting to feel like they're getting back to normal. This coming weekend, March 5th, is the Ward Melville High School Saltwater Seminar and Fundraiser. Admission is free, and there'll be over 150 vendors. There are lots of raffles, and all the proceeds go to the Ward Melville High School Fishing Club. Lots to check out and bring the kids and try your hand at the Sport Fish Simulator. This is always a great show, and be sure to stop by the fisherman table and say hello. The March issue is out now. We have a great article on all the hot striper lures for 2022. Tony Salerno has a great read on how the weather can really turn on the bite. Captain John Raguzzo has his impressions of the New York bluefin tuna bite. Will it last? And Matt shares his technique of scouting for new fishing locations over the winter for a more productive season. All here in the March issue of the Fisherman Magazine. A great place to renew your subscription or become a subscriber is at one of the upcoming shows. By being a subscriber, you can now be part of the Dream Boat Contest. Visit thefisherman.com slash events or click on the card in the top right to get all the show and events information. The Long Island Boat Show is back at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum March 11th through the 13th. Long Island's best boat dealers will be there with huge savings that get you out on the water this boating season. For boat show information, visit nyboatshows.com. We haven't heard much on the cod action on the East End, but let's check in with New England editor Dave Anderson, who may have some cod reports since the New England party boats are fishing the same grounds as the East End boats. Dave? Hey, Tim. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a tough week out there off a of block. Um, it's just been so windy that most of these boats haven't been able to get out. Uh, the little bit of news I have heard has been positive, you know, at least compared to the rest of the winter where that cod bite has been pretty tough to, uh, pretty tough to find. But because of the inclement weather, it's been really hard for these guys to stay on the bite. So, you know, when they get on them, they are finding better numbers and, you know, plenty of keeper sized fish. But, um, you know, a lot of times they're heading back two or three days later when they get the next weather window and those fish have vanished. So it's, it's more of a hunt and peck thing right now, but, um, you know, this, there are more fish being caught than there have been the rest of the winter. So I guess that's the little shred of good news that, uh, that we can hang our hats on. Back to you, Tim. Thanks, Dave. Just a reminder, the Fisherman Magazine's weekly video fishing forecast has a New Jersey report and a New England report. And by checking out the other areas, you can get a good feel how the fish are migrating up and down the coast. Another tool to help you get on the fish. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you. All right, now let's check in with Long Island Managing Editor, Matthew Broderick from Florida. Matt? Hey, Tim, thanks for covering me this week. I'm down here on vacation in sunny Florida. I've been doing a lot of fishing, catching a lot of different species of fish. Can't wait to get back to New York, though, and once I get back, I will give you all my full report of Florida fishing. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters has this report. Paul? Well, this weekend... I went to the surf fishing show over at the Radisson, put on by the Montauk uh, Surf Fishing Association. And let me tell you, it was great. It's a great organization. I think everybody that fishes for stripers should belong to it. Uh, it's been a terrific time. As far as for me, I got to meet all the guys I see here on the Fisherman Report, which was really good. Uh, I got to meet you, Matt. I got to meet Mark from Cow Harbor. I got to meet the other guys from uh, your organizations. I got to meet the candy man who he was tying up flies and did an excellent job. So, and it was a terrific thing. I'm not a big surf guy, but it was good to get there. Good to see the group. 
good. I signed up for my surf fishing journal. It was good. I had a great time. Now, as far as the fishery part goes, right now, it's mostly fresh water. The Loyal Fly Riders had their fishing trip out to uh, the Connecticut this week, and Norm reported back, sending me photographs about the fish he caught. There were a lot of, a lot of guys there. Uh, they did a good job. They had a terrific time. A lot of fish were caught. Beautiful day. What else are you going to ask for? It is next week. It's going to be March. we got only a little time. Now, you like to fly fish or you like to think about fly fishing? Mark this on your calendar. March 26th in the Radisson, the same place the surf show was, will be the Fly Fishing Expo of Long Island being produced by myself and a good friend of mine, Kenny. We are going to do an excellent job. We got speakers lined up. We got fly tires, fresh salt. There will be vendors there that you can purchase items from. It's going to be a terrific time. So mark it on your calendar. March 26, 9 to 4 at the Radisson. That's Saturday, March 26. Until next week, Matt, hopefully it's going to get warmer and hopefully we're going to get out there and fish more. Uh, tight lines, everybody. Paul will have another one of his fly tying demos at the end of this video. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Mike? Hey everyone, it's great bumping into a few people at the Montauk Surfcast Association show last week in Hot Bog. Uh, it was, um, <laughs> my son and I got there a little late, so most of the good stuff was gone and we were able to pick up a few things, some uh, really nice SNS bucktails and just great to see everyone. Life getting back to normal a bit and obviously uh, the spring bite just around the corner. So as I was going through the garage, they often get distracted and uh, from my organizational skills and cleaning everything up, ran across, much like the bucktail, something very simple that's very effective, and that's the diamond jig. Uh, this one is a A47, a little bit more for a vertical jigging on a boat. Um, and, you know, I've caught a ton of fish on that. Last spring was the first time I really got to fish extensively over by Jessup's Neck by Sac Harbor, which has a really great weak fish bite, and diamond jigs without any kind of tube on it, really effective, a bunch of bass and blues mixed in, but you know, it's the, the flutter as it comes down gets it, yet in the fall when there's sand deals around, it's, it's kind of tough other than the soft plastics to match this profile for that. The other added bonus with this is being able to deliver a teaser out off the you know away from all the schoolies that are kind of swarming the the lip of the beach and um you know well a lot of guys say it's like kind of a guggen plug to to use it's very effective i've caught a lot of fish on it and i also think for people that are starting out it's a very simple one to to use you're going to be able to know when you're dragging the bottom which you don't really want to do yet at the same time you can work that to your advantage of getting that little puff of sand um one of my buddies that works at Haskell's in East Quag had told me years ago is not to start really right away. Let it let it get to the bottom, get that little bit of puff of uh, of sand going as the retrieve starts, and um, you know that's been effective. And I just think this is a really you know something obviously all of us have in our bag. Whether or not we admit to using them or not, it's another thing. So just something to think about as the season gets going in uh, probably a few short weeks. So. Um, I'll talk to you next week. Hopefully we'll be out there slamming them pretty soon. Well, when I was out in Montana, I came across this fly. It's called uh, Chernobyl Ant, and it doesn't look like an ant to me. It is a big fly, and it's made out of foam. It floats like a cork, and I'm like, that can't work. But I did buy a couple, and I went out there, and it worked amazingly. It has several advantages. First of all, it floats like crazy, so it doesn't sink. It's all foam. Uh, secondly, it is, uh, it's great if you were doing a two-fly rig, or they call it the hopper-dropper rig. Uh, it works great that way. It will hold up a lot of weight. Whatever reason, the fish keyed in on it. So when I came back here to the Long Island, I had to try it, and guess what? It works everywhere. I fish it in Connecticut. I fish it out here. Uh, I fish it in the ponds for bass, bluegills. And you know what the best part is? It's very easy to tie. And it's mostly just foam that you can get just about anywhere. So why don't we get to the vice and I'll tie you up one of these Chernobyl ants.
This is this is one of these flies that you look at, you lend it. Why do the fish eat them? I don't know. When I was out in Montana, this was a hot fly, and I've used it everywhere in the East, and it still works. It's called the Chernobyl ant, and it doesn't look anything like any ant I know of. But anyway, it works, and it's a great pattern, and pretty durable, and floats like a cork. So, I'm going to start, and I'm using heavy thread because it's mostly foam, this uh, fly. And I don't know exactly where this came, the, who originated this, who even thought of this, because like I said, it doesn't look like anything, anything I've ever fished with before. The first thing I do is I put a little thread bit, uh, layer down, and then I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm going to put a little yarn base. I'm going to use yellow yarn, uh, orangey yellow. And the reason is, I think it, it will jump right out. It will make a nice hot spot. So I'm going to tie it on. I'm wrapping forward, 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 like this. Right up to the front. And I'm just going to reach back here and cut the yarn. Leave a little tag. That's a little hot spot. Okay, first thing I do, first thing I do is I'm actually going to take my, I'm using foam, I'm using brown and black. The brown is going to be on the under his body. I'm going to lay it right here and give it a wrap. Then I'm going to take my legs, and I'm using brown legs. You could use other color legs if you like. And I'm going to make loops. A loop like this. And I'm just going to lay it in on top. Just like that. And I'm going to pull it over. And I'm going to stick my black foam right on top. And I'm going to wrap it right like that. I'm going to take a little orange dot that I made out of a uh, out of a little hole punch with yellow foam or orange foam. I'm sorry, orange foam. And this makes it a little bit easier for me to see the fly when it's in the water. Now I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to spiral wrap tight. Go across the top. See how I'm doing that? Go across the top like that, and then wrap. And the reason why I'm doing that is underneath, it doesn't look like I'm crossing over. Cross the top, pinch, and wrap. Right up to the front. Get my other rubber leg. And I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to tie it in, like that. And I'm going to push it over top. And pull down and wrap it. Get another orange little dot. And 
tie right on top pick this up do my whip finish pull it up and cut the thread to take my scissors and cut this pretty even and same on the back reach in there cut this loop reach in there and cut this loop like that reach down now you can Trim these up if you like. Do roughly the same size all around. And this is what you got. This is the Chernobyl hand. It, like I said, I don't know why it works, but it does. It works for trout. It was originally designed for cutthroat trout, but I've caught rainbows, browns, brookies, cutthroat, uh, even bull trout on these. I've caught bass, bluegills, perch. It just, I don't know why. I think it's the rubber legs. Um, it doesn't look like any hand I know of. But this is a <laughs> this is a great fly, especially out here. All right, so until next time, tie lines. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dream Boat Contest. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and the index for specific reports. Please come by and say hello at one of the upcoming shows. Let us know how we're doing or if there's something you would like us to cover. Hope to see you this weekend. I'm Tim C. Smith for thefisherman.com.